I do many, many things. I am a writer, a doctor, a nuclear physicist, a theoretical philosopher. But above all, I am a man. I can't remember the first time I saw Philip Seymour Hoffman, but I remember the reverence I had for his work. It was probably Paul Thomas Anderson that introduced me to this man, first with his moving performance as a hospice nurse trying to fulfill the wishes of a dying man in Magnolia. And you gotta believe me, this is really happening. Or a socially awkward boom operator in the 70s porn industry who swings and misses when he tries to hook up with the talent in Boogie Nights. <sighs> Or a sleazy mattress store owner who scams men who call a sex hotline in Punch Drunk Love. Shut, 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 shut up! As I devoured more movies, his appearance, however brief, would excite me. He would go on to garner countless awards on the stage and screen, winning an Oscar in 2006 for his unforgettable performance as Truman Capote in Capote. I did everything I could. Okay. I truly did. At a certain point, I had him on this pedestal as this sort of end-all, be-all persona. Somebody that I could aspire to be as an actor. A man who time and time again seemed to effortlessly prove his elite status as a well-respected performer. This man is in the house. <laughs> Until I saw Along Came Polly, a mediocre romantic comedy riding that wacky Ben Stiller wave of the early aughts. I was kind of aware of it, but years later when I learned that our boy Philip Seymour Hoffman was in it, I nearly shart myself. I don't know what that means. I tried to fart and a little shit came out. Oh. I just sharted. So I watched it, and I was genuinely not joking here. I know we're being a little jokey jokey fatty fall down fart fart. <laughs> genuinely inspired. You see, when I was pursuing acting full force back in 2010, 2011, I was going out for maybe two auditions a week and most of them were characters like Sandy Lyle, the overweight, obnoxious yet loyal, heart of gold best friend. That was the first acting job I got in the indie Bart Got A Room. And two years later, that's kind of what I did again in American Pie Presents The Book of Love. But, and this is embarrassing to admit, is that I kind of look down on stuff like this. Oh man, I'm so friggin' horny. This is lowbrow humor. You know, I wanted to do serious material. Look at Philip Seymour Hoffman, I'd say. He never did stuff like this when he was starting out. Well, I was right. He didn't do it when he started out. He did it when he was already a respected working actor. He did Along Came Polly after Love Liza, an indie drama about a depressed man grieving his wife's death and coping with it by huffing gasoline. Yes, this is the same man who just four years prior was crying with Tom Cruise over a dying man's bedside. And here he is, now he's, he's waddling across the room after shitting his pants in a romantic comedy. Let it ride! Here he was, he was playing the kind of character that I thought was beneath me. Rain dance! And he's knocking it out of the park. T! T! Come on! I'm burning! A little bit more about his character Sandy is that he's a former child actor who's known for one particular movie, Crocodile Tears, a breakfast club type film from the 80s in which Sandy played the bagpipes. I saw that movie in high school, that bagpipe scene. That was the funniest shit, yeah, We had a man. good time in that picture. You want an autograph? Ah, no thanks. Throughout the film, he has a skeleton camera crew following him around, Kevin Hart and Judah Friedlander, doing an e-true Hollywood story on him. He pops up periodically offering advice, which is hard to listen to when you're watching him take the grease off of his friend's pizza and pour it onto his. He's starring as Judas in a community theater production of Jesus Christ Superstar, but then decides he's going to play Judas and Jesus Christ. All right, look, here's the deal. I'm the star of the show, okay? So if I decide to bust out a solo, 
do me a favor and give me the freedom to rock out. And after it's revealed that he's the one who actually hired the camera crew to follow him around, not E! News, he helps his best friend by using his acting skills and going in his place to the most important business meeting of his life. Of course, he defies expectations, the meeting goes great, and he saves the day. Are you that kid from Crocodile Tears? You're goddamn right I am. I thought so. There is so much to this performance, and not just those big, memorable moments. Look, he's not even in focus, and he's still hilarious. He takes some food from a chef, tries it, doesn't like it, throws it into a bowl, and keeps walking. Speaking of walking, just look look at his movement. Look how he walks. What kind of gait is this? He's like a confident, out-of-shape penguin. And that fall. Man, I can't tell you how many times I've watched this fall. I think it's my favorite Pratt fall of all time. A close second might be when Hoffman recreated a local TV commercial for mattresses in this special feature on the Punch Drunk Love DVD. Have you ever seen anybody eat shit like that? That's amazing. Hey, man, you okay? Uh, I was afraid that was gonna happen. And the way he talks, God, his mouth is just always open. He's always out of breath. I guess everything he does just sort of takes it out of him. God, he looks like he smells, too. I could smell him from here. And his clothes. Dude, I love how after his rehearsal, he's just haphazardly put on his shirt and blazer over his black leotard that he was wearing and then rolls up the sleeves. It's insane. And I know that this wasn't his doing, but it's still funny. His bagpipes he played in Crocodile Tears are just permanently enshrined and carefully lit behind glass in his apartment. It just adds to the lore of Sandy Lyle. And you know what's even more inspiring than all this? Hoffman, for all of his prestige that you can imagine that he had and all of the amazing roles that he's played, he had trouble playing this character. And he had the same feelings about a character like this that I had. Sexual intercourse. Penis and vaginas. Yes. According to a retrospective article on Decider.com, quote, Hoffman pushed back, conceivably worried he'd embarrass himself at a time when his career had attained legitimate prestige. That was not lost on the production. As far as playing Sandy, it also took a while for Hoffman to find the character. The first scene of the production schedule was the pizza scene, and the director, John Hamburg, said, quote, that day took a lot of work to get him to give the performance you see on screen. He was such a wonderful actor that I don't think anyone but my editor and myself would know he had not fully found Sandy Lyle yet. You just tap a real light right on the tush and say, hey, I'm your daddy. I'm your daddy. See, there's something inspiring in that because this kind of comedy is difficult to do if you're not accustomed to it. Like, you know, Hoffman, yes, he was hysterical in Boogie Nights, but his character is grounded in reality in that movie. Whereas this, I mean, this is, this is big. This is like Disney energy. It's more technical, something you might see in a sitcom. When I would go out for auditions, I would always dread the sitcoms. People didn't talk like this in the real world. It's broad, it's heightened. It was hard for me as an actor to relate to these things. Any natural instincts you might have to play a character had to be thrown out the window in order for anything to make sense, which made no sense. The whole thing was maddening. So it's very human and relatable that Hoffman was having that same trouble, finding his rhythm as this over-the-top comedic character. He finally found it weeks later during the first basketball scene. And that's another thing, like, I didn't know actors did this. They went into a movie not knowing fully what they were gonna be doing and then they find it during the production? That sounds scary as shit to me. Like, what if it didn't happen? What if you just went the whole movie and you never found the character? What would have happened? Well, anyway, apparently Hoffman was trying to say his line, let it rain more low key. Then the director gave him some notes, quote, Phil, in his mind, Sandy thinks he's Michael Jordan. His confidence is totally misguided and he's blind to his actual abilities. But he does not know that. And so if you low key it, it's not gonna work. So Hoffman tried it over the top. Let it right! The whole crew burst out laughing and that was it. He found the character. Raindrops! Old school! 
Despite his uneasiness, he also clearly had fun with it. I love this outtake between him and Ben Stiller. It's kind of insane. Okay, it's really important. Yay, Sandy, look at me. It's really, really important. Okay, <laughs> don't. I promise me, just this one time, you won't screw it up. So there he was, Philip Seymour Hoffman, playing the idiot having fun playing the idiot, struggling to play the idiot, second-guessing himself playing the idiot. In other words, he was working his way through a particularly challenging acting job, doing the best he could, and delivering. Iceman! In that sense, I'm not just put to shame for how I used to look at characters like this. I am in awe, truly. Let Hoffman's shart be a lesson to you. Yes, you, Jacob Elordi, star of Euphoria, Priscilla, and Saltburn, who once described those kissing booth romantic comedy movies you did as a younger actor as, quote, ridiculous. I didn't want to make those movies before I made those movies. You have no original ideas, and you're dead inside. So it's a fine dance. Hey, Jacob, not everything in your career might have the same dramatic weight or so-called prestige you might attribute to any given episode of Euphoria. If you ask me, that's some ungrateful, disrespectful, narrow-minded shit. And to anyone else out there who wants to act professionally, you are not above any one role or character. And if you think you are, then you haven't put in enough effort to make that role something great or memorable. That's your job. If you end up playing a character that you maybe didn't see yourself playing, or you're caught up thinking about how it might make you look in the big picture of your career and your image and all that bullshit, you just think of the time Philip Seymour Hoffman, a man who many would agree achieved this kind of illusory prestige status as an actor, actively chose to play what was on paper a generic sidekick best friend and let it rain. Hey guys, uh, thanks for watching this video because I really enjoyed making this one. This one was like, you know, focusing on one aspect of an actor's career is something that's, it was just interesting. And I was, it was nice to be able to work in some of my own personal experiences as, as well. So if this is a video that you liked, this kind of video, let me know. Uh, maybe we can make some more like these in the future. And in the meantime, uh, just anything you can do to help this channel, basically just like this video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share it. A any of those things help this channel immensely as uh, we're kind of finding our groove again, uh, uploading videos. So thanks again for watching. Shit! Oh man, you all right? Uh, oh yeah! Shit, man, are you okay? Yeah, uh, I was afraid that was gonna happen. Uh, I was afraid it was gonna happen with that goddamn thing. Think you're all right? right? Sure you okay? No, I'm fine. Just try your arm and stuff. You all right? He's wearing, he's wearing leather. Fucked okay. up my guitar though. Let's see. Did you get it on film? Yeah, yeah we got it. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> you want to keep that thing?